Welcome everybody. Don't forget to subscribe, especially if you enjoy this video. Anyway, we have a large cuckoo clock and it's missing some parts, but it's not going to look bad without some of them parts and some of the parts I still have to order. So anyway, let's take a look at this one. So this is a large clock. It's missing the horn. It does have this one here, but it usually comes as a set when you order them. We're, let's just say 16 inches. And so you figure the top's gonna be another probably six inches because this should have the deer head on it. We're uh, 12 and a quarter inches wide. And so if you were to order a new top, you would probably be at 12 and a half to 13 inches or bigger if you wanted the top for it. The main reason why I got this one is because I paid $16 for it. That doesn't include shipping. And the reason why I went ahead and bought it is because it does have the Music Man in here. And it's a large clock. It does have the cuckoo bird. Hands look good. It does have the two tunes to it. And they're an unusual, or I should say I haven't heard those tunes before. And so I kind of like that part. Open up the back here. I'm guessing this was 8 of 72 is when this one was built, which kind of surprises me on, let's say, the age there, because on the dial, it does say Germany only. It doesn't say West Germany and normally if it says Germany only I always thought that was a clock that was built after World War one or two anyway you can see the you can see the music box in there it's got a small movement which doesn't take a large one but the Smaller ones, and in my estimation, they're a little bit of a cheaper movement, let's just say, for such a big clock. The bellows. Seem to be fine. See the cuckoo birds sliding all over the place in there. So it's come undone, and he does have the plastic legs. We'll look at it and see whether they're broke yet or not anyway i'm gonna go ahead oh this also didn't come with the weights i have to look in the book to see the frame look and see what size weights this is supposed to have because of big being a big clock like this i would almost suggest these are probably the 320s i think they call it but uh setting this up It does tick. Let's turn the hand. Oh, the bird's stuck. There. Now listening to this, you can hear it needs oil listening to the fan circle. And I'll pull the music chain. And the music box sounds very good on it. So I think what we'll do is start taking this apart and I'll start by the front taking the hands off and then uh, 
detaching. I don't have to worry about detaching the music man because that's all up inside unless I decide to oil the music box. But uh, I'll detach the bird. We'll take the whistle boxes out next. And if you're new at this and you're going to do it, take pictures of what you see inside here. There I shut my smaller clocks off that really tick and my camera picks that up. But take pictures of what you see. Take pictures to see which lift wire goes to which arm. And when you take the whistle boxes out, keep the arms with the whistle box. And when you first get it out, you can even measure between the two of them to see if these wires are the same, which some of them are and some are a different length. So, and I'm going to detach the chains too. So let me get all that done and I'll be right back. So this is a first for me, a large clock like this clock here. It had the screw in it and there's no nail to hold the bellow or the whistle box. And so what they do, they glued it in. I hate it. It's uncalled for to glue it in because that's just, in my opinion, if they're looking to save money, sure they glued the box together, but why not get a nail to tap in there compared to gluing these in. So what I do is I get a putty knife. Uh, this one's a little large, but this will work just fine too. Make sure one end, which they normally are, they're beveled. This has got a little bit of when I was using for cleaning, but it still has a sharp edge on it. So what, this is the butt beveled end. This is the end I turn away from the wall of the clock. And what I do, is I'll start in the one corner you can already tell it's kind of loose, I'm going to guess. You just rock this knife back and forth in there. Come to the other corner. Do the same. Keep it as flush as you can against the wall of the clock. That's a little bit tight there, so let's go back to where it's a little bit looser. And as you're getting this in, pry, give it a little bit of a twist. This only had one spot, I'll show you, where they had it glued in at. This had one spot. Normally they glue this whole whistle box in and it is heck to get out. So looking at this, it all looks good. Remember when you're setting your clock up, these whistle boxes aren't meant to open all the way. That That's about as far as you want them to open. And this has leather bellows still. They're, they look like they're all in good shape. So I'll get the wire back. We'll keep the wire with this one until I can look at the other whistle box and see if the wires are the same. Okay, on the whistle boxes, this one here, as we're facing it, is the one on the left. This one's the right. And you can see how much longer that wire is. So, and usually the longer wire would go on the right side. But just keep yourself a special note. So when you go to put your clock back together again, you already have a good chance of this being right as this thing, as the lift arms are lifting these up to make the bellows work. So I'm going to go ahead and detach this wire that goes to the pendulum. The only thing you have to do is stick a small screwdriver in here and open it up a little bit. I got kind of a big screwdriver here. Let me get my smaller one. Get it in that hole. Just give it a little bit of a twist. It opens it up. So you can take it off the swing. 
and go ahead and pull it through. Now looking at this wire, you can see it looks straight. This wire you want straight. If you're ever adjusting the clock so it'll sit so the clock sits level and the tick-tock sounds right, this would be the wire you adjust. And you don't be bending it clear inside here. You just grab a hold of it and hold it here and push, or you might have to hold it and push this way and run it and see if your tick-tock sounds right. Now the spring from the Music Man over is attached to the frame of this clock. I'm going to see if I can untie it. I haven't seen one this tied up on here before, but it doesn't matter as long as you have some stress on the spring so it does pull the Music Man back in. So let me get that done, undone, and then we'll take the movement out and show you the whatever's on the back of this plate. So after you get your four screws out, because this because this is a musical clock, this rod here goes up and kind of goes inside the music box. Go ahead and take it out, but be careful you're not damaging anything up above. It's just the idea, you're not really going to hurt too much, but it's the idea of you don't want to mess with this here, getting it out of adjustment. And your main adjustment's going to be this here. And if you want to take a picture of this to get an idea of the angle of it, because it's going to have to come unscrewed and taken off so we can get the movement apart. Now, if this clock, which I, I didn't test it, I, I kind of tested it just by pulling the chain, but this, this is what you need to do every three to five years is take your movement out, get a can of air, blow it out, and then re-lube each one of these uh, parts where the gears come up through the, through the frame. Like I say, you can see it's a little bit dusty and whatnot, but if you blow this thing out, re-oil it, you can stick it back in the clock and it should keep on running because that new oil is loosening up, keeping the old oil from gumming up and it just thins it back out and your clock almost, we'll say, runs like brand new. But I'm going to go ahead and clean this one myself because... I, I want a fresh start. This here is swing where the pendulum goes on. You want to inspect that, make sure it's out wide enough. Look for wear on this horseshoe part that the, the little swing sets on. Uh, check the swing on the inside. Evidently you can order new ones of these. But they say on some of your older ones, for the continuous ticking, they'll wear a groove in here and it will cause this to not want to tick as easy, easily as it should. So it doesn't hurt to check that also. So let me move this box out of the way and then we'll look at this. So for a special note before I get any further, this here bird, the foot is broke and there's a possibility you can glue this back on with some super glue and use a little bit of soda to set it and help fill in the cracks or whatever. Uh, I ordered some birds already so I'm just going to keep this in my parts area so push come to shove I can use it later and I might go ahead and repair this. We'll see how much time I got. Let's see. This this does say West Germany on here. Even though the box didn't say that. So that tells me this is a newer movement. Uh, this is a regular. I can't see if it's got a number on there or not. Does that say Bachmaker? 
GM up there. There's a number here, 2572. So more than likely this was built in 72. Let's see if I can get you a little closer to take a look at this thing, what it says. There's a regular set. Side the center of the screen right here is a date that's on here. And right there it says West Germany. So let's start taking this apart. The first thing I'm going to take off, I normally start on the front. But the first thing I take off is this wheel, mainly because it's got the screw in it. This makes it so much easier to adjust the timing to the gong cuckoo. So we'll show you that. Let me go ahead and take it off right now. Some of these are newer ones are pressed on, which isn't fun because it just makes the job e or harder to get these things apart. Okay, these arms have got locks in them. So let's undo the, first we'll undo the spring wire for the gong. So to, usually you start with the gong first because it's at the top. You just turn it around and it has a locking lever in here. That lower one is the locking lever that holds this into place. The taller one is the one that hits the star wheel and activates it. And that's going to be the same the next one. Just start lifting up. There's the locking on it. Let's see if we can get this off now. I can't get, there we go, it went past it. See, normally these aren't stuck on there as hard as this one was. But like I say, I'm totally happy with that. I'm gonna go ahead and screw this in a little bit more. I don't want the screw to come off. So we'll put that in our parts cleaner. Let's go ahead and take this off that activates the bird. Or not the bird, the, the music box. So when you're getting ready to take the pictures, because if you're going to take this apart, you want the pictures to show you how to get this thing back together again. I'd suggest starting off with take pictures of these and possibly take this off and this off. Might as well show you. There's one clip. This one here has got the clip and has this washer here. We'll call it a washer. This here is what holds your snail in and holds that gear down, obviously. So that way it doesn't lift past those gears and start messing up on its time. On here, this whole lever is together and what happens is once the hour this here let's get a little closer again so this drops on to here each one of these one hour two hours three hours four it just goes around until it hits a 12 
and that's what this is for is it drops down on there once it drops down and is triggered to start cuckooing each one of these teeth will they'll drop down it's only dropping down there because it's one two three o'clock we'll say now it's got one two three it will count the hours that this here snail told it to to count So to pull these off, this one's like most of them. When you clean these, make sure to clean the inside of the hole too with the toothpick or whatever. So because you want that to drop freely. Plastic gear. Now this here is what trick that star wheel right here one side is taller than the other side the shorter side would tell the clock only the cuckoo one time for the half hour the taller side lifts these up high enough and then that other gear falls down so that way it knows the clock knows it's the hour now we have a spring here that helps push this down. Usually if the spring's not there, it starts messing up on the time because this doesn't want to fall all the way down. So we'll take the spring off now so we don't lose it. It's got a bit, bit of a bump in there. They normally just fall right off. There we go. So that's free to take these levers off we have an I hate you e-clip <laughs> I don't like those things there's another one there they're rough to get off that my friend makes a tool to get those things off I haven't made a tool and I don't know if I want to bother with it so this one here is free from almost everything. So let's get that one out first. And I'm just going to show you how I do it. You do it how you want to. Those are wedged on there. And you have to separate them in order to get them off. I don't deal with it. Hit it a little bit. Make sure it's getting past everything. Now we're right at the top, we'll call it. So kind of hold on to it so it don't go springing off somewhere and see if you can pull it off. And there's a varmint that was on there. An I hate you eclip. They're punishing the clock workers <laughs> that uh, would normally work on them and I'm sure they've made a tool my friend Mark he's made a tool I'm not dealing with it let's get this one started and making sure it can come out just hold on over here So we have the clock tore down, I mean the outside of it, 
And like I say, you want pictures as you went taking this apart, all these levers so you can see exactly which way they go on. Now the bird part I'm going to take off also. What you do is you unlock the spring, which doesn't take much. It's just bent over the frame here. And get it to come off and stay off of there. But what you want to do, be very careful. These here need to be separated in order to get your the rods out. So this one's really open. And here's shut really tight. I don't know if you can see that or not. I don't even know if I can get my screwdriver in there. Oh, this one will fit. Anyway, you don't want to break these things because I don't know that you can order more and get them put back in. But what I do is, once I get them open, to make it a little bit easier, I put the screwdriver in here and I give it a twist and it pops, usually pops right out if you have it opened enough. And again, paying attention to where this was in here to work properly. So we've got everything tore off that we need to tear off. Now to get either a cup to set it on there, get a cup to set it on there, because what we're doing is trying to keep this from setting on the desk like this. And the reason why is when we take this apart, you want another pitcher inside here to make sure you know which way the gears go, even though knowing you're going to take it apart this way, this is the way now you, you want to take the pictures of this, 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 and especially this because a lot of people get confused on these triggers here on how they go together besides getting the bird put back on. And make sure the fan's not in your way so you can see the gears so you know what they look like at, at, in a side view. And then we're going to take this off and try to lift the plate carefully and leave all the gears in place. So there we can take another picture to see possibly where the gears go. And also once we get down so far, take a picture of this that holds a bird and whatnot. Uh, out or back in so you can see what side of the gears they go on and how they go in here. Now let's see if we can get this off carefully. There's only a couple that we might be able to nudge back down if they want to come up. So besides a little bit dusty, dirty, whatever you want to call it, it actually doesn't look that bad. But you can see how this is stuck in there. There's a few of them that are stuck. So that's telling me more than likely this is gummed up already because it's sat so long. Once they're gummed up, you need to take them apart and clean them because it's hard for the regular oil to loosen something that's so bad. So anyway, we have all of our gears still in place. Let's go ahead and get a picture of that. And then we'll take it apart. So we have the cuckoo side train and the time side train. Let's do the time side first. Plastic gear that does have a clicker in there. This is what I consider a cheap, cheaper clicker 
because it has those little paddles there instead of an actual clicker that would catch in there. They work. Usually that's the only thing you can order unless you're very specific with your people that are selling these things to see if they have the ones with the clicker. But if you have to buy this, you can either buy the rebuild kit or the gear and what, whatnot's messed up, you can just order the whole clicker. So before I go in further, let me show you this here and I think that's it. All this stuff that we already took off, you should get a picture of that because what the idea is, once you have all this clean, they're all mixed together, you'll be able to identify every one of these pieces and set them aside so this isn't as confusing. Realistically, there's not much in here, but you have to identify each one of these to be able to put them back in their proper spot and so having just these gears is going to be a blessing to you if you've never tore one of these apart here's the part that goes with the pendulum that ticks and counts the hour we're not going into names because most people don't care about names they just care about where the gears go this in here, all the teeth look good too. This here looks good. Like I say, it actually doesn't look bad, but like I say, pulling some of these out or taking that plate off, I had to push one or two is because they're stuck on there because of the old oil. So this one's not going to come out. I'll show you later. This one here, I don't think it's going to come out. I'll show you later. Let's take the winder off. Make sure it clicks and holds. Which I already, I already checked the click and hold thing when I put the chains on. Let's take the fan out. The fan is what... Dirt in there. The fan is what slows the bird down. And you want to check make sure that this here is allowed to turn but not too freely otherwise if your bird's going too fast you either have to bend this rod down a little bit more and that's after you pull this out because you can lift this up to get it past to be able to pull this out bend that down a little bit and then pop it back in and that should help a subscriber of mine said on one of his to slow his down he dripped wax on the two sides and because of the weight of the wax that slowed down the, the cuckoo from cuckooing so fast i've never tried it because i haven't had a problem yet so that's just an idea and so this is going to stay let's turn it clear around pull this one up this one here is underneath all this stuff. So you got to remember that when you go to put it back in. This one has the warning pin on it. That's going to be part of your timing. You can see that or not. The warning pin. Okay. So this one is just wedged between the two plates let's get a picture of that sometimes i remember to put these pictures in the uh video but most of the time i forget there you go we got a picture of that so this one just pops right out you can see the pin there falls inside that groove to give you a better idea where this one sets. This one has an E-clip right here. So we have to pop that out. And then to get it out, you have to lift it up. 
and then it circles around that gear. Now on this one here, definitely clean that hole out even after it's gone through the cleaner. When you put it back on, this little pin here it sits on, I would add a little bit of grease in here and then after it's on, put a drop of oil in there because you'll forget about this one nine times out of ten when you're just going to oil the movement and it needs a little something because that's what helps trigger your bird from going in and out and if it can't fall freely then you're going to have a problem with the bird either not coming out or staying in or whatever or being staying out whatever so this one here the reason why I don't take it out let me pull these legs off so we're done with them and then so it's not too confusing so the reason why this one stays on is it has this Pac-Man wheel we'll call it so Mark calls it so I'll call it that's easier and this can come off but the more you take it off it's wedged on there and the more you take it off the sloppier it's going to get and just fall off on you or spin around on you and not follow the gear like it's supposed to the only reason why you'd be taking one of these off in my opinion it does have this pin here and if that wire pin there broke off you can buy these and replace it and all you have to do is get a fatter screwdriver and you just work it back and forth and then that will pop off now the reason why this one's not coming off is because this is pressed on there it's natural both of these can wiggle that's natural for these but it has a spring on here and this here what do they call it a bushing or something is pressed on there and what that the reason why there's a spring in there is with everything together that's going to keep the hands from flopping around in a circle you need some kind of friction there and that's what that there's meant for so those will stay on so realistically I need to put all this in a basket my smaller parts I have this I think they call it a tea strainer or something you make tea in it's a nice stainless basket I put my smaller parts in here, my screws, my E-clips, all the smaller parts, lock it shut, but you got to remember, don't get carried away with these baskets, shake them and figure you can wash it underneath the sink afterwards, you got to be careful because those E-clips and whatnot, there is a gap in between here, and they will come through there and fall in your bowl, and if you're not paying attention when you're dropping, dumping the water out of the bowl into the sink you'll lose it right down the drain so unless you can find something better but this is what I found that seems to work the best for me and as long as I know the hazards <laughs> that's great now you know them too so anyway let me get all this stuff clean and I'll be back I'm gonna put this in the sonic cleaner which makes my job faster but you don't need a sonic cleaner. I have a movement cleaner in there right now. And if you're interested in my videos, I have a homemade uh, cleaner for movements also, if you want to take a look at that video. So I got it clean, dried off, and now I'm ready to put it back together again. And so the first gear that you're gonna put in does have this uh, pin here so once we get that in which you can do it after but it's easier doing it now let's get this in and this I added a touch of grease here and I plan on also adding a touch of oil to it too and like I say, usually you can't get to this. There we go. So I'll put my drop on there now before I put that E-clip on.
There we go. And this piece here, it's going to keep falling out because it's side heavy, I guess we'll call it. And so I don't think it's going to stay in. We can set it in there. Let's see, it goes this way. That has to go inside the hole of this. And this curved part's on the side of this. Inside or however you want to put it. And so that's all into place. So now you can get your picture that you took with everything together and start finishing putting this thing together because this is the important part getting that in before all these other gears go in so it's a lot easier and that way you can get your e-clip on there. Now I got all my parts separated so these few gears I have sitting on the bench here these gears right here all go into the clock inside the movement all of this stuff out here goes on the outside of the movement so using the pictures that I have we'll start putting this together Well, I've started there, but we'll start with getting this stuff into place. So that's all it is to the cuckooing side. So that's it besides this and I'll put this in shortly after I have the plate on and start sucking it down. So I can just pop this in there. So it's in there. So I'll put these two screws in, then I'll start moving the gears around in order to get this thing back together again. And the reason I put these nuts in now is because it's going to hold this end of the clock as I get the gears in. And I'll lightly push down, usually I try to get one side in first. And then I try to get the other side in. So I just snug these because these are all in. So I got them all in. Finish putting the nuts on and go from there. So I went ahead and got the clock all oiled and now I'm going to install these and these take those I hate you clips or what they call them and so I'll do that off a of camera. 
On these Eclipse, I've taken my pliers and held close in by the circle so I wouldn't damage it. And I have a real skinny screwdriver that tapers a little bit fatter as you go. I took this and pushed it down on there so it opens it up a very little bit, which is what it needs. Now I can get it started. with my three hands it's not opened enough so I'm going to have to pull that washer in a little further I got too far in it's, it's clear up to the end let's see if it'll go on now The main thing is getting it started on there. Because once you have it on a little ways like that, if you can get it back out, Now you can take a block, set the block on this part here, so you're not bending too much of anything. You have to find the right spot. Then you can set this on here. get on all the way make sure it's where you want it so now have just a very little movement and it flows freely I put this one on it started smashing these down a little bit and so I had to repry them up these two levers here in order for them to move freely and now let's get our little spring on there. This little hook side needs to go towards the movement. And you just have to thread it on here. It's on. Now go ahead and let that hook. And keep bringing this around. Until you can get it on where it belongs. Now the reason I want that on there now is because... The reason why I got this on here now is because I need some weight on here so I can see what this thing's doing as I'm triggering it. So this here is not dropping in the mouth. It's going beyond and starting to climb back up again and because it's supposed to sit right there. So and the final stop is right there. So what I need to do is this warning pin that was on this one here needs to be turned to be right there. And in order to do that, I need to separate this movement by taking the nut off. And I need to see just where it is I need to have it. And so looking at the pin, the pin is sitting right here on the stop of this on the wrong side. So actually I only need to move it a little bit back. But what I need to do is you see this gear here 
has this big old gear. I need to move this big gear off of this gear so I'm not turning the whole movement because I only want the pin to be set where I need it. So some of this is going to fall apart. Don't worry about it. You can get it back in. I'm going to be taking my fingers to separate this and I'm also going to use my pliers possibly if I can get in there and try to pull the warning pin gear away from inside there that's touching another gear. Okay, pretending the snail is on. This here would trigger but of course you got to be turning this wheel here and when it's ready this here will be set where it's supposed to it'll keep going around until it's done and that drops right in where we want it so let's get the snail on and try it I don't have the nut in but it's tight enough I don't have to worry too much about it And when this gets down to the last one right here and drops here, then that should shut off. There we go. Piece of cake, right? Mm -hmm. Just takes a little bit of time. So let me get the nut back on and we'll start dealing with the rest of this. Having close-up shots, it kind of messes you up, and you don't know when your hands are in the way or not. So we're putting this gear back on, which is connecting to the minute hand right there. This here snail's got the, or that's connecting, yeah, connecting to the minute hand. The snail's got the hour hand on here. And this here is what's going to count the hour. And I'm going to put it right there. So let's see what we can come up with. Should have a half hour next. You see how it fell just a little bit. This has not fallen because that's a half hour. Okay, it's on the hour evidently, so let's, instead of it trying to fool us, let's put this over here. And because it's the taller star in there is raising this up a lot more. needs to be moved actually I can tell that right now I'm gonna move it one tooth over and the tooth is on this stick this back on make sure this is ready to turn I think I already messed that up this there's a half hour Or that was one o'clock there half hour this should be two o'clock one two now let's spin it all the way around to get to our 12 o'clock position so what we're looking for once this drops we need to clear this and also be able to hit our one o'clock after the 12 o'clock we'll say so this looks like it's gonna be 11 o'clock two three 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So our half an hour, half hour, this will not drop all the way. There's our half hour. Now let's see where our 12 o'clock is once it gets ready to start dinging or cuckooing. Okay, you see where it is. It's dropped and it has enough space on the from the side of this wheel here. Figuring once it comes up here, hits a half hour, the one should hit here fine. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So let's pop our half hour in here. Half hour is not dropping all the way. There's our half hour. Now our one hour, one o'clock, is going to be sitting right on top, and that's where we want it. So, so far, it looks like that timing's done. So we don't break the hand. But let's go ahead and get these Eclipse on. And don't forget your cap and then put your e-clip on let's put our long arm in there first put our short arm in there And then put our hammer in there. So those are locked in. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and get that spring to the hammer in. They have a hole here that it goes into. If you can grab it and pull it through some more. So this is the easy part. Once you know it's done cuckooing, it can't do any more. That's when you want to put this on. And you don't want this to be resting on the plate. You need it up a little bit so it doesn't drag your add too much friction to the clock and then it won't want a cuckoo. So we'll worry about setting it up in a minute. Right now, we know this thing's done cuckooing and so we can manually turn this thing to get a cuckoo Oh, there's a gong. Cuckoo. That last cuckoo is where you want to put it because this way the lift wires aren't being touched. Gong. Cuckoo. Thing is, it's starting to raise this rod. So I think I'm going to have to adjust this again. Gong. Coo. Coo. And this goes a little bit further and I don't want that. So the cuckooing is done. Now we can manually do this again. Gong. Coo, coo. Gong, coo, coo. That's what we need. Gong, coo, coo. So I'm happy with that because I don't like it just after the last cuckooing is going on. So that way it's not ramping up. 
ramping up, trying to hold up the bellows or anything else. The clock is, let's call it dead until it gets triggered again. So I'm happy with that. So let's see about getting this bird back in. And this here needs where that peg is. This needs to be on that side of the peg. See if I can trick this thing into letting me put the spring on also. Nubs, I got to go clear over this. Now we'll get that spring before I push it down. Didn't want to come off, so now I don't want to go on. So what I do, I got it triggered in there. We'll call it triggered. I just push it in with my pliers. And once you have it in, now you have to shrink these again. You don't want them too tight. Yeah, a little bit of play. The bottom might be moving just a little bit too much. Let's see. Yeah, go the right way too. It helps. Now you can watch the bird come out once I trigger this. Even though there's no bird there. See how it's come out and sucks back in. See that work right there? So I'm happy with this. It's normally you would want to hang this up and let it run a while to see how it works. But because this is what I'm going to consider such a new movement, and I do believe I got all my settings right, I'm just going to set it in the box, and we'll we'll call it pray for the best. So I don't have to take it out again. Now. When it comes to these chains, you have one music chain and one time chain, one cuckoo chain. You need to put these chains together and the longest one, make sure you put that one on the music because the music's clear up here. The chain has to come clear up here and back down again where these are just right here. And so you want the chains, the weights to fall to the floor at the proper time. We didn't put this rod on yet that goes in with the music box. And so we're just going to have to fake it and hope for the best. Otherwise, yes, we might have to pull it out again or lightly bend this. I don't know if you remember or not, but this here was at a little bit of an angle. So looking at the book, and the book doesn't have every one of these movement plates but this regular plate here you have to look at every detail it has to try to find if you're looking for to try to find the weight size your movement supposed to have so this is my plate oh sorry so this is the plate that matches my plate and according to this it's supposed to have the 270 and so it surprises me as I was figuring it would be a 3, 380 something like that because of such a big clock but it is a 270 all of this here matches mine. So I'm going to have to dig up some weights 
I, I have a bunch of them, so I might have some 270s. Anyway, this here clock now, I didn't show it because my battery died and I wanted to get it done. But this here is wax now. I didn't tear it apart like I normally do. Normally I take the whole frame off, unscrew the animals from the back side, and wax them so I can get a good wax on it. But this doesn't look too bad. Now I did notice that the horn's missing, but so is that part that holds the horn. You can see where it wasn't stained. And so I'm going to have to carve one of those out of a piece of wood and then drill it and put the horn on there. And when you order these things, they do come with the mouthpiece also, which is this here. So down the road, once I get that done, I can install that. So anyway, let me go ahead, get the movement back in here, and see if we can get this thing going again. So I got the bellows in with the wires. I've already tested it, but it's hard to test holding it and flicking the switch and getting everything to run. I haven't installed the nails yet. I need to put the finished nails in at the lower part below the screw to hold these I'm not gluing them back in that's in my opinion stupid yeah it'd be easier for me to put a dab of glue on there and let it set a little bit and it'll be done but I'm going to put the nails in so my clock seems to be running great but the music weight is up here and down there is the time and the cuckoo let's fix that so what the problem is, is this bar here that goes up to the music box needs to move over a little bit further in order to get the music to work on the hour and the half hour. So let me loosen this screw right here, move it over a little bit and we'll see if that works. I move this over just a little bit too much and it caused the cuckoo not to want to do his full cuckoo so i moved it back this way just a little bit now cuckoo's fine the music man comes out on the half hour and the hour and let's hang this back on the wall and we'll show you now i haven't repaired the horn yet i have to carve this out a little bit drill it and put the horn in but nine times out of ten what's wrong with this is when someone took the clock off the wall they laid it on the face that horn sticks out so far it breaks right off that's why if you have a horn you don't want to glue it into that piece you want to be able to take it set it aside and that won't happen So happy to say we had another successful clock on cleaning the movement and adjusting the music uh, man or music box so that way it goes off on the half hour and the hour. And I kind of figured that's what it's supposed to do because there were two tunes in it. And these tunes are unusual to me because I haven't heard them before. And so I kind of like them. 
Anyway, don't forget to subscribe because it's free. And let's see what kind of clock we're going to work on next time.